And I think Hammond will try and argue that this is also some sort of some grand spreadsheet plan. No, it isn't. The reality is that over the summer, after Labour's campaigning, naked panic set in amongst the Tory backbenchers on a number of fronts, including the rollout of universal credit and the impact on their constituents, the collapse of social care, and yes, the growing prospect now of a worse than ever NHS winter crisis. So going back to their constituencies, Conservative backbenchers realise that people have, well, they've just had enough of austerity. They've had enough. So for most it's, of their constituents, it's been all pain and yet very little gain. So uh, with a bit of chutzpah, which actually I quite admire, Mrs May, through the architect of austerity, the man who in the days when the Tories were in opposition designed the austerity programme, well, she literally threw him under the proverbial bus with a unilateral announcement of the end of austerity. Uh, it really has become a trick-or-treat budget. The problem for Philip Hammond is that he knows that the economy is hardly growing and the chaotic handling of the Brexit negotiations is putting what little economic growth that there is in peril. So by any standard, the management of the economy by the Tories over the last eight years has been a catastrophic failure. Austerity was never going to work. Of course, we'll hear from Hammond and the Tories trying to beef up their record of economic management. They'll boast about reducing the deficit. Well, let's remember, we were promised the deficit would be eliminated by 2015, not 2018. The reality is that the Tories haven't sorted the deficit. They've simply shifted it onto the shoulders of NHS managers, head teachers, school governing bodies, local councillors, and yes, police chiefs, as we heard from the report this morning. When Hammond also boasts about reducing the debt to GDP ratio, remember that under the Tories, the country's debt has almost doubled. It's now a massive nearly £1.8 trillion. Pounds. No economy will thrive without stable investment, leading to consistent growth, high productivity, and as a result, high level employment and good pay. So recent number 11 briefings want us to think that we're witnessing a wise chance of holding back expenditure so that the economy can cope with the economic hit that would follow from a no-deal Brexit. And that all will be well when a Brexit bounce occurs after a deal is sewn up. Well, I, I believe the Chancellor can't distance himself from the mess this government is making of the Brexit negotiations. He's a leading member of the Cabinet's negotiating team. His failure to stand up to the fanatical no-dealers in the Cabinet and in his own party makes him as culpable as the Prime Minister for this unholy mess that's putting our economy at risk. But the real end of austerity is also not just about halting future planned cuts. It's also about reversing the cuts inflicted on our community by the Conservatives over the last eight years eight hard years of austerity. We need a general election, and we need a new government. And Labour stands ready to form that government, and I stand ready to bring forward a Labour budget that will create the prosperous and fair, sustainable economic settlement that we need. And we will open the debate next week by challenging Theresa May and Philip Hammond to end austerity and to end it with decisive action in this budget.